Welcome back everyone. In this section we're going to talk about measures of center. So when we collect data there are many different values that can be used to describe the data. In this lesson we're going to discuss the most common measures of center as well as when they are appropriate to use. You're likely familiar with the term average. For example, if you talk about the average points per game of a particular team, or if you're talking about your class average or your grade in the class. In math, the average refers to the mean. The mean is found by adding all of the values and dividing by the number of values. The Greek letter sigma is used to represent the sum of a list of numbers. And so if we use x to represent the different data values, then sigma x means the sum of all the values in that data set. And so we can write a formula for the mean as you see here below. So let's say we want to find the mean income of all the employees that are reported in this table. Well, the first thing that we want to do is we want to add up all of the values that are reported in the table. And then we're going to divide by the number. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's 9 of them. We're going to add them up and divide by 9. If we add all these values up, we get 1,348,000. 348,000. To find the average, then we're just going to divide by 9. And so the mean, 1,348,000 divided by 9 equals $149,777.78. So this represents the average value of the employees in the list. But notice, there's only one employee who makes over that much money. All the rest make below that much money. So let's see what happens when we leave that employee out. When we just exclude Newman from the list. Well, now let's find the average. We're going to add all of these up. But now since we have eight values, we're going to add them all up and divide by eight. If we add all of them up, we get 404,000. And so to find the mean, 404,000 divided by eight gives us a mean of 50,000. 500. So if we exclude Newman, now the average looks a lot more like the values that we're used to seeing on the list. Leaving Newman out lowers the average significantly. So let's just practice with the mean. We have the total area of the 15 largest states of the United States, and we want to find the mean area for those 15 states. So we're just going to add all of these values up and divide by 15. So 665 plus 269 and so on. We're just going to add everything up and divide by 15. This is just to show you how we're solving the problem, but we're just going to add everything up. And if we add everything up, we get 2327 divided by 15 for an average area of 155.13 square miles. The median of a data set is just the value that's in the middle if we arrange all the values in order. We determine the median two different ways, which we'll practice in just a minute, but it just depends on the number of data values, whether you have it an even number or an odd number. Because the median is always the number in the middle, we always know that 50% of the data is above the median and 50% of the data is below the median. So let's find the median income from the employees in the table. The names don't really matter, so I'm just going to pause for a second and reorder all of the incomes so that they're written from smallest to largest. And so if we just write all of the data values in order, 20,000, 50,000, so on, all the way up to 944,000, the median is the data value that's in the middle of this list. So we can cross out top and bottom to just find where the median is going to be. And here's our median. Again, the name doesn't matter. The median is $53,000. So that means that half of the incomes are above that amount of money, and half of the incomes are below that amount of money. The median is the value in the middle of the data. Well, what happens if we remove this largest income again? Remember, when we removed the highest income from the mean, the value changed significantly. So what happens to the median if we remove that larger value? So here again, we're just going to rewrite them in order. 
I'm just going to pause for a second and rewrite them all in order. And then we'll find the median. Because now we have an even number of data values, we'll have to use a slightly different process to find the median. And so if we reorder all of the incomes, and we leave out the highest income, which is Newman's, let's find the median again. So we can cross out top and bottom until we get to the middle. But now we have two values in the middle because we have an even number of data values. There's eight instead of nine. To find the median, we essentially want to find the average of these two values, or we're just going to add them up and divide by two. So 52,000 plus 53,000 divided by two is going to give you 52,500. And so even though the mean changed by almost $50,000 when we removed the largest income, the median only changes by about $500 when you remove the largest income. In the case of the data that we've been using, Newman's income is what's known as an outlier. Outliers are just data values that are much larger or much smaller than any of the other data values. The mean or the average value can be impacted by the presence of an outlier. As you saw when there was a really high income, the average of all of those incomes was greater than everybody else's except for that really high one. And that's because the mean was affected by Newman's income. However, the median is not really affected by large outliers. So this is why many times when you see things like income or prices for homes reported, they're given to you as median values rather than the mean. Because median values won't be as affected by really, really large numbers. So we report the median values so that they're not as impacted by those really large numbers for those really expensive homes or people who make a whole bunch of money. And in this case, the median gives you a slightly better approximation of what the average would be. The median income is much closer to the income of most of the people in the group than the mean income was. So again, we have the area and square miles of the largest states. Let's find the median for these states, and then we're going to compare it to the mean. Here, they're all listed in order, even if it does go from largest to smallest. So we can just cross them out one at a time to find the median. And we'll find that the median is going to be 104. And in the first case, our mean was something like 150. Notice that 104 is closer to the center of the data set than 150 is. So let's see what happens to the mean and the median if we remove Alaska, the largest state. Well, the mean is just going to be, the, again, the sum of all the values divided by the total number. So we're going to add up all these numbers and divide by 14. And if we add up everything without Alaska, we get 1662 divided by 14, or a mean of 118.71 square miles. And again, to find the median now, we can just cross out the numbers top and bottom. In this case, we will have 2, 98, and 104. So we're going to 104 plus 98 divided by 2. That will give us the number in between the two of them, 101. So while the mean shifted by almost 40 square miles, the median only shifted by 3. So when there are outliers present, or there may be outliers present, the median is sometimes a better representation of the average value in the data set. Another way of finding an average value, even though it's not always useful, is what's known as the mid-range. The mid-range is just finding the mean of the smallest and the largest numbers in the data set. And so we're just going to add up the minimum and the maximum and divide by 2. So here let's find the mid-range of the areas. Again, here we have 665 and 82. So the maximum and the minimum to find the mid-range. We're just going to add those two up and divide by 2. Gives us a mid-range of 373.5. If we repeat the process, but this time just get rid of Alaska, 269 plus 82 divided by 2, we get 175.5. So although the mid-range is very easy to calculate very quickly, it ignores a lot of the data values, and you can see that it's not really a great measure of the average value. In both cases, the mid-range is greater than every other value except for one. The mode of a data set is the value that's the most frequent or the one that shows up the most times in a data set. The mode's always going to be the most 
common value. The data set can have more than one mode if you have two values that are tied for the most appearances or the highest frequency, or it can have no mode at all if every value is different. And every value being different happens very often when we talk about numerical data. And so the mode is not always useful in terms of numerical data, but we can still determine those values. So here we have the duration in days of the final 20 U.S. space shuttle missions. We want to know which number of days appears the most often on the list. And then we want to find the mean and compare the two. So we're just going to count. It looks like 10 appears once. But we'll keep track in case we miss one. 11 is 1, 2. 12 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 13, 1, 2, 3, 4. 14 appears to be 0. And then 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so the mode, the most frequent, is going to be 12. If we find the mean of this data set by just adding them all up and dividing by the number of data values, which should be 20, if we add up all these values, we get 258 divided by 20. And so the mean is 12.9 days. Notice that's similar to the mode, and this should be the case. The value that shows up the most is going to have the largest effect on the average. So the mode is somewhat useless with numerical data because every number can be different and you would just never have a mode. It's the only measure of center that we can talk about when we have any type of categorical data or data that's just not numbers. So here we have particular majors at a college and the number of people who are enrolled in those majors. So what's the most common major? What's the mode of this data set? Well, the most common would be the one with the highest frequency. And so the most common major would be business. We can't talk about the average major because we can't add up computer science and liberal arts and divide by five. But we can talk about the most frequent, which is the mode in this case. We can also find the mean of group data. So in the last section, we talked about grouping data into classes. We can use that frequency distribution to then determine the mean of that data set, even if the values are only in classes. What we're going to do is find the midpoint of each class, multiply the midpoint times the frequency, and then use that to find the average value. These steps are provided here, but we're going to do an example on the next slide. So first we want to find the midpoints of our classes. To do that, we're just going to add the lower limit and the upper limit and divide by 2. 100 plus 104 is going to be 204 divided by 2 is going to be 102. The midpoint here would be 107, 112, 117, and so on. 122, 127, and 132. Just add up these two numbers and divide by 2. Now there are two values in this class, so we're going to multiply. 102 times 2 will give you 204. 107 times 8 and so on, 856. And if we just continue down in the chart by just multiplying the frequency times the midpoint, we now want to add all of these values up. So 204 plus 856 and so on plus 2016, we get a total of 5,710. Our total frequency is 50. And so to find the mean, we're just going to divide 5,710 by 50, which gives us an average value of 114.2, right around our largest class values. You are all likely familiar with the way your grades are calculated for this course or many of your other courses. Course grades are an example of another type of mean called a weighted mean well, you have categories that are weighted differently in the average. These weights essentially are the frequencies that are used in the distribution. For example, test scores 
have a higher weight than your homework scores when you find an average. So let's use this table and we're going to determine the student's average in the course. We have the category for each of the student's assignments along with the percentage, so the weight of each category, and then we have their average score in that category. So our weights or our percentages, the percentages will have to add up to 100% or the weights will have to add up to 1. And so we can treat this as 0 0.25, 0 0.35, 0 0.15, and 0.25. And then we're just going to multiply your homework average, or Lynn's homework average, accounts for 25% of her grade in total. If we multiply 85.7 times 0.25, 21.425. The test score accounts for 35%, so 0 0.35 times 65.2 which is 22.82.15 times 28.5 4.275 and 0.25 times 72.9 18.225 if we add all these values together we get a total of 66.75 or 745 and then we're just going to divide by the total weight or in this case just divide by 1. The grade would just be the average in the class. It's going to be 66.75 when we round. Finally I'm going to pause briefly here and show you how to calculate some of these values just using the Excel command. Okay, so here in Excel we just have some IQ scores, just some randomly generated numbers to use as a data set. If we want to find the mean of our data, then we want to type equals, and in Excel we use the term average. Open the parentheses and then highlight all of your data. Close the parentheses and hit enter. You can also just type in the region. A2 to A26, and we have the mean of our data set. To find the median, it's very similar, except we're going to use equals median, and then we're going to do the same thing A2 to A26, and as you type it, you can see that it will highlight it automatically as you type it, which gives us a median of 97. We can then find the mode in a similar way, equals mode. And here we're just going to choose single. And then again we can highlight all of our data. And we see that the mode is 96. And finally we can find the mid-range by using the formula equals the maximum of our data set. Plus the minimum. And then here at the beginning, you want to put parentheses because we want to divide the sum of these two divided by 2. And we get the mid-range. Please let me know if you have any other questions.